Hello, this is Mr. Horns 83. This is the Mr. Horns 83 show, and we have finally reached our destination, the finale of X Men Month this year. And I am doing this episode with uh, I'm doing this review. This episode is going to be the review of one of the greatest animated series ever made. And that's the X-Men animated series. Now, before I get into the review, I got to say this again. This video is not for kids under the age of 13, so... So, so let's get into it. Now, I said this show is greatness personified. There are some things I gotta point out before. Some flaws I gotta point out before. I could just, you know, go on a tangent about how great this show is. Now, first off, let's get right into the Magneto, Enter Magneto episode where we get our introduction of Magneto. Now, the reason why I'm counting this as a flaw is because in a later episode, which is the Iceman episode, which is in season three, and I just passed it, yeah. The Iceman episode right there shows that the X-Men knew Magneto before inter, before the Inter-Magneto episode, so. I'll get into that, but yeah, that's the whole, that's one of the big flaws. Some of the storytelling in the show was a bit inconsistent. It's like, you know... It's like they did not know the Shadow King or whatever. I mean, I mean not Shadow King. I saw the pictures of Shadow King. It's like they didn't know Magneto. Like when Magneto goes to bust beast out of jail, he's like, "Oh, you must be Magneto." And if you see the Ice Man episode, you see that Beast is there in the fight with Magneto, along with Cyclops and Jean and Ice Man and. I believe might have been Angel. Um, and one other X Man. But yeah. So. Oh, it might have been Storm. So the fact that when they first introduced Magneto, it's like the X Men don't know who Magneto is. But then when they do. Later on. You see that they already have battled Magneto and knew Magneto, so that's one flaw in the storyline. Another thing I gotta talk about, I think some of these episodes are out of order. The way they're placed up, because I think all these are I think this, 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 this they're all in the same spot. So are these. No. So this and this came after this. This is the episode I introduced the Juggernaut. And the come of Apocalypse and the Cure happens after Juggernaut because this is where they find out where Xavier is, but Xavier's still missing here and they don't know what happened to him. So, yeah. So the fact that they kind of put things out of order kind of screws things up, but hey, still hasn't stopped my enjoyment of the show. There's even a couple, I think, in here that are out of place. I was like, I think this was like the third or fourth episode of season two. And it really gets shambled and out of whack, this whole one, because... Alright, so we got these episodes are all in order. I'm guessing this episode's in order. Then you get the Dark Phoenix stuff. But then... Episodes like this. I think this. And I think this were all, all should have been a part of season four because you know 
Because this episode, especially with the freaking Silver Samurai episode, because... Because it's based after... Not only after... You know, Wolverine had got petrified of Proteus. But it's also based... Look at that. Uh, oh, wait a minute. But it's also based after this. The Weapon X lies in videotape one. So, I don't know. That was a big debacle on their part. But other than the episodes being out of order and the whole Magneto thing where, like, they act like they don't know Magneto. But then you see in a later episode, in a later season, that they did fight Magneto prior to the Inter-Magneto episode. So, that was just... Uh, crazy, stupid thing that they did with the story in this show. Now, now that I've gotten all the bad out of the way, all the flaws, there are some other flaws in the storytelling in this, but now I got all that out of the way, let's get into how great the show is. This show is freaking amazing. This and the Batman Animated Series show. There's a Hall of Fame for TV shows. This show and the Batman Animated Series show should be in it. Because these shows are awesome. Especially this show. I mean, this is one of the greatest shows ever. I don't care if it's animated or not. It's one of the greatest ever. I mean, and the storylines that they freaking did. Where, you know... Them deep dark storylines. This is one of the first shows that really got in. This was one of the first animated series or cartoons, whatever you want to call them, that really got into deep dark storylines. Now, anime had been doing it for years at that point, but you know, American animation hadn't been doing it too much. But this show did it. They tried doing it with Wolverine and the X Men, and yeah, they did all right with it with Wolverine and the X Men. X-Men Evolution, they made it a little looser and a little, you know, con you know, not as intense as this show. But, yeah, I mean, this show is just amazing. I love it. I wish it, it would have went on forever and ever and ever, because that's how great it was. I mean, just, you know, the whole scale of the show was just amazing. And seven seasons, they say well, it was canceled. I'm like, well, you know, seven seasons, I don't know if that's highly considered a canceled show. I mean, you, know, you ran through seven seasons, but also you think about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles animated series that it's just ending. I think it just ended a year before this one ended. I think this ended in like 95 or something. But, uh, I think Ninja Turtles animated show ran from 87 to 94. Which is kind of weird, because that was the same run that the Star Trek Next Generation show had, was from 87 to 94. But, yeah. I mean... This, was, this show is just amazing. I love every, I love the voice actors for the characters in this. I love, you know, the costume design, the character design for these. One of my favorite designs in this show, really, is what made me a fan of this guy was Mr. Sinister. I mean, how awesome Mr. Sinister looked. Especially when they did Dark Things, because they, they kind of built him up like he was kind of like Dracula in this show. Now, Wolverine and the X-Men kind of failed with Mr. Sinister in the freaking Wolverine and the X-Men show, because Mr. Sinister did not look as awesome as he does in this show. I mean, honestly. And he wasn't in X-Men Evolution, because X-Men Evolution was a prequel show. But Wolverine and the X-Men was a sequel show. And it was a sequel show to this show. And it was a sequel show to the pre... But then again, something I should have mentioned with Wolverine and the X-Men is... If that is a sequel to this show... Then how come... I mean, yeah, Wolverine didn't trust Emma Frost. But how come none of them knew she was a part of the inner circle? In Wolverine and the X-Men and... It's not like she said, oh, yeah, I left the inner circle. I'm not with them anymore. 
But yeah, I mean, this whole show is just amazing. I There's not a dull episode of this show. Not a boring episode, not a dull episode, nothing. Now, there might be a few shows, there might be a few episodes I, like, don't really care to watch, like, you know. Uh, where is it at? Uh. I mean, this episode I wasn't too big of a fan for. Oh, yeah, here's another day, too. Xavier. Oh, this is the one where the Shadow King takes over Xavier's mind. I haven't watched that one again yet. But, yeah, that's the one where he takes over his mind. There are a few episodes I have not rewatched yet. Like, I haven't watched Stormfront again. And, like, there are some episodes I'll pass on. Not because they're bad, it's just I didn't. wasn't a particular thing. Like, this episode's supposed to be focused all on, I think, Cyclops. Yeah, this one's focused on Cyclops. Um. And then there's another Cyclops focused episode, which is. Well, you got this one where he finds out that. The leader of the Star Jammers is his dad. I forgot his dad's name now. <laughs> but yeah. And this episode was focused on Cyclops as well. But this was kind of. Well, actually, this one did come after the Dark Phoenix. This was supposed to, I believe, be before the Dark Phoenix. Because if you see the storyline in this episode, it's supposed to be before Dark Phoenix episode starts. So, yeah. This should have been coped. This is what I'm talking about with the episodes being out of order. This should have been coped in between the regular Phoenix saga. This, I think, was the season finale. Of, uh, or it was after the Dark Phoenix Saga, I think. The Savage Land one, yeah, I think this was after Dark Phoenix Saga, but that Cyclops episode I was just showing should have been coped somewhere in between here. So I remember when it first came out. This one, I think, also was supposed to be coped in between the Dark Phoenix Saga as well. But, you know... Either one of them freaking uh, are in order. I think it's the same thing with this freaking uh, season five, which was the last season. But yeah, this show is just amazing. I love it. I mean, despite the flaws, it's still good. This one, I don't think it's supposed to be right here. It might be. This is where Rogue's boyfriend comes back, and you know, come to find out he's some kind of alien monster. I'll tell you, Season 7 only had 6 episodes. I wish... Maybe it was cancelled before the 6th episode, but yeah, you know, after the 6th episode, before they hit the 6th episode, maybe they had, like, a longer run of episodes. It looks like they have, like, what? 20-something episodes per show? Yeah, 25 per show. Which is what Wolverine the X-Men did. They did, like, 26. This one had 19. I think this one had like 18 or something. No, only 12. But this one had 12 too. Actually, 13, yeah. These two have 13, and the rest have more seasons to it. But yeah. But then again, I think some of these episodes coped in season 2 and season 3 were supposed to be season 5 episodes. <laughs> now, let me talk about this episode here. One Man's Barf. This episode is what had the creation of the Age of Apocalypse storyline, which was one of the biggest storylines in the X-Men comics at the time. And, you know, it kind of shows that world of, you know, the Age of Apocalypse, and it's just like, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff going on. You got these freaking Sentinels, or I think they're Sentinels, but it was crazy. You also get the episode where, you know, I'm sure a lot of people would have loved to seen this. Wolverine and Storm were in love with each other, and they were married and all that. It was like, you know, Wolverine's always chased, you know, Jean, and I'm like, dude, there's so many better looking ex-women there that you could hook up with. Why worry about freaking just Jean Grey? She's, she, one, she's a tease. Two, she freaking wants Wolverine and Cyclops to fight over, no matter how much she acts like she don't. She's got that ego like, oh yeah, I love it when Logan and, and Scott fight over me. And then I sucker Logan in to think I'll hook up with him, but then I stay with Scott. <laughs> it's 
So, yeah, you know, Mike, there are so many better looking ex women in the show. Well, you know, he couldn't get with Rogue, because Rogue's, you know, Gambit's girl. Jubilee's too young, and he always thought of Jubilee like a daughter anyway. Uh, let's see. You had Psylocke in the show, but then they ended up playing up the Psylocke, you know, Archangel love story. They didn't do it till like, which I thought, it took too long to do that one, which was the Beyond Good and Evil episode, which, you know, was a four-part episode. And honestly, I think this, this was like supposed to be, I think this was like the season finale of season four. But, you know, apparently they got it right here, coped here, instead of, you know, then they got all this other gibberish coped right here. I think a lot of this stuff was, uh, except for maybe the Phalanx. The Phalanx one was probably after the Beyond Good and Evil, but all those other ones, uh, I think, came before Beyond Good and Evil. Uh, yeah, I gotta think this Stormfront, yeah. I think a lot of these episodes came before that, but, you know. Because I know there's a few episodes after the frickin' Sanctuary episode before they did to be on Good and Ev Evil. I remember it was around summertime that year, so, yeah. So that's kind of weird that, you know, this is coped at that point. But anyway... I love this show. It's an amazing show. I've been re-watching it ever since my wife got Disney Plus, and, you know, I've watched the other two X-Men shows, too, but, you know, I've watched more of this than I have those two. And, like, you know, because this show was just so amazing. Despite the flaws, this show was an amazing show. And if Marvel ever makes another X-Men animated series, it has to be as good as this. If not, I don't know that Marvel is as bad as people say they are, and you know, but yeah, if they ever make another animated X-Men show, I hope it's as good as this, because this is just, you know, but fix some of the flaws you put in your shows, because also with the freaking, also if you look at freaking Wolverine the X-Men, now look, they never played up like that, none of them knew who Magneto was in that show, because right off the bat, the second episode of Hindsight. They're going after Magneto because that's where Xavier's body is. And, you know, Magneto's like, oh, you know, I found his body outside of the borders of Genosha and I brought him here and try, I was trying to help him because, you know, at one point me and Charles were friends, you know. So, you know, I would never capture, you know, Xavier against his will or blah, 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 blah. Which I think he wouldn't because... Magneto and Xavier, like this, like, like, you know, I just said, they had that friendship. They've been, you know, pretty, pretty tight, even though they're enemies now because of, you know, their viewpoints. Because, like, Xavier wants to live in peace with humans, but, you know, Magneto wants to rule humans with the mutants, but, you know. But, you know, yeah. So them playing up like they didn't know Magneto won, uh, obviously right in this Iceman episode, that kind of contradicted that first freaking Magneto episode. It's like, well, wait a minute, like, they have fought Magneto before because there it is right there. You know, so I don't know why they did that and kind of contradicted it. This is one of my favorite episodes here, too. Because it gives you kind of a background how Xavier knew who Sinister was when Sinister captured Magneto and Xavier at the end of Season 2. Which is Reunion. But yeah. Because like, no sooner as Sinister pops up, Xavier's like, Sinister! Magneto's like, oh. I've heard the name... Quite frankly, I'm not impressed. <laughs> Magneto, you're just jealous because Mr. Sinister's a more awesome villain than you, so shut up. No. 
And another thing I thought they took too long to do with some of the top villains. It took too long to introduce some of them. Like the freaking Inner Circle and that. But, you know, they did get all those out in Season 3. But season 2 was pretty much introducing what would come to be pretty much the main cast that was in almost every X-Men episode in existence. Because, I mean... You have all the base X-Men team they were in. Magneto's in it a lot. Don't see too much of the Brotherhood. Except for when Mystique's supposedly doing something for Apocalypse. <laughs> um, Cable had a big part in this show. So did Bishop. Uh, Trask and all of them. Mystique. Uh... Yeah, it seems like almost every episode of X-Men, you had Apocalypse Cable, the main core X-Men, uh, Magneto, Mystique, and, you know, I'm not going to say every episode, I'm going to say every season, you had an Apocalypse episode, you had an episode with Mystique, you had an episode with Magneto, you had all them episodes with them characters. So, yeah. Overall, I give the show a 5 out of 5. I mean, the show is just great. Despite the flaws I pointed out, you know, which the show being out of order, the contradicting in the storyline with the whole thing with the freaking. With the whole them not knowing who Magneto is, but then they know who Magneto is, and that's just, you know. Pretty, oh yeah, Archangel's in pretty much every season as well. So that's what I meant. I didn't mean every episode, but I meant every season. And you had Cable in every season. You had Bishop in every season. You had the Core X-Men. You had Magneto in every season. You had the uh, Mystique and sometimes the Brotherhood in every season. Uh, you had the Sentinels in every season. Just about. Except for five. There was no Sentinels. Uh... So yeah, they pretty much, yeah. They pretty much gave you their core cast pretty much in the first season. Like, you know, all the people that was going to be in every single season. Which, like I said, the core main X-Men, Magneto, Mystique. Uh, we'd see the Brotherhood here and there. But, you know, Sabretooth, I, another one that we've seen in almost every season. Except for season five as well. Even in season five, which, you know, I'll go down to that before I end this. I guess second episode of season five, we did get the return of Apocalypse. The fifth horseman, because Fabian Cortez went cuckoo after he turned on Magneto in the Sanctuary episode. And then they thought he was dead, but Apocalypse took him because he wanted him to find him a vessel so he could return because I guess Apocalypse knew he was going to lose that battle in Beyond Good and Evil because apparently so he must have known but anyway uh yeah overall like I said despite the flaws of the show I do love it it's a 5 out of 5 show I just wish the flaws I wouldn't have held it back. I would have held it to four and a half. But, you know, the good outweighs the bad. Now, had the orders been in order, had we not had to worry about the whole freaking contradictory with the X-Men not knowing Magneto and all that, would have been something else. And something else I gotta say, too, because I didn't say it for the Wolverine the X-Men review, but this is on Disney+. Plus. And, I, you know, I don't own the rights to it. I'm just using these images for a review. So, yeah. But, yeah. Five out of five show. I love it. Love all the character designs. All the storylines. They took a lot of time to focus on a lot of the X-Men in this freaking... In this show. Unlike the other shows where they focused on certain ones but didn't focus on all of them. This one, you've got almost an episode for almost every single X-Men in the show, and some of the villains. I mean, like I said, the set, 
is mainly about Mr. Sinister's origins. Uh, the Savage Land episode, that's mainly about Sauron's, you know, origins. The Shadow King, whatever it takes, tells you about the Shadow King. But then they tell you more in the next episode where Shadow King and Xavier have their rematch in an astral plane. Uh, so yeah, they took a lot of time to focus on like our... Now yes, there was more Wolverine-focused episodes. I mean, come on out. Out of the past is based on Wolverine and Lady Deathstrike's past. But they threw an alien in because they were getting ready to do the whole uh, Phoenix saga. Uh... I mean, even the X-Men that weren't really a part of the team in the show, they did an episode here on Iceman, talking about him. They did an episode about Archangel. They had this, the Juggernaut episode was not just an episode about the Juggernaut, but it was also about Colossus. Uh, yes, yeah, so they did a lot of backstory on a lot of the heroes and villains of the show, which I think, this is the only platform that I think they've done aside from the comics where they focus on the villains and the heroes of this of the X-Men universe but yeah we also get a backstory about Archangel and the cure when he was still Angel so yeah I mean you know the show's just amazing. They had a good balance. Their stories were good. Um, the only flaws I see was the out of order, the way it was set out of order, and the fact that they, when Magneto first comes in, they don't, they act like they don't know who Magneto is, but then now that he comes in, but then, when they talk about the Iceman episode, that kind of contradicts what they had set up. <laughs> also, the fact that, you know, they built up that, you know, no one knew Wolverine knew Sabretooth and had a feud with Sabretooth. Which, you know, even uh, X-Men Evolution, they kind of knew that. You know, it's kind of like, well, you know. So, yeah. Other than that, though, this show is great. Five out of five show, and I loved it. Uh, and if they ever make another X-Men cartoon... I hope it's as good as this one, because this show is just amazing, and uh, can't wait to see what happens next. But yeah, um, now a couple days ago I did a Facebook Live where I asked people if they wanted to see me do a playthrough of Spider-Man Maximum Carnage, or do a commentary of... Last Action Hero. Speaking of Spider Man. Yeah, you know, but yeah, that's it for X Men Month. But, you know. Uh, let me know in the comments if you want to see that. Uh, let me know if you want to re if you want me to review this show too, because I love this show too. I mean, it's a great show. And I just watched the ending episodes again the other night. Because uh, I pretty much watched most of the main episodes of it. But yeah, I haven't watched all the main episodes. But one weird thing about this is they only put it, it says season one, but they had like, what, two, three seasons of that show. Anyway, but yeah, let me know if you want me to review that in the future too, because I was planning on doing it. But, uh,. Yeah, that's Disney Plus. Got a lot of good stuff on it. Old cartoons that we grew up watching and all that stuff. And, you know... But, anyway, let me go back to X-Men before I end this because, you know... And I don't play the episode. God darn it. I gotta play the episode. No, 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 no. Good thing I stopped that when I did. I would be in some trouble. This is what I wanted, yeah. So, yeah. Also, do a couple shout-outs real quick. Just mostly probably going to be... Yeah, a couple shout-outs, then a birthday shout-out for yesterday. But anyway. Uh, 
So, shout out to my son, the Black Ops Killer. You see him in a Facebook Live if you watch me on Facebook Live. Uh, shout out to my friend, Heavy Metal Turtle. Uh, shout out to the Bring the Juice podcast from uh, Cody Felgor, and I can't remember the other. It's Andrew something. <laughs> uh, shout out to. I don't know. This video is already 30 minutes, so I don't... I'm not going to do too many shout-outs. There you go. A few shout-outs. So go check out their channels after you've watched this. they got some good content on their channels as well. Uh... And I gotta give a special birthday shout-out to my niece, Morgan Kemper. She just turned 20 yesterday. And I can remember when she was first born and I first seen her when I was at my sister's house. She was a little... She was a little cutie pie. <laughs> now she's a grown woman. I'm like, Jesus Christ. You know, she's a grown woman now. So, happy birthday, Morgan. Uncle Michael loves you. Uh, and hopefully when we go back down that way, I'll get to see you. Me, Aunt Sheila, James, Elizabeth want to see you. <laughs> but, yeah. Anyway, that'll do it. Please like this video, leave a comment, subscribe for more. Follow me on Twitter at Mr. Hornsby 83. Follow me on Facebook at the Mr. Hornsby 83 Show Facebook fan page. Uh, my Trigen Toy page, which might be able, which I might have some news for Trigen Toys if we can figure out a day when we can go out there. Because apparently now they're open, so. Might have some news about when we might be at the flea market again this year, so. This COVID stuff's starting to cool down. Well, not cool down, because there's been more, like, I think a bunch more cases of death. Or, you know, people dying from that COVID thing. But, you know, um... Now, look. Well, I'll talk about it on the Facebook Live tonight. I'm, uh, this video ran longer than I was expecting it to. But <laughs> anyway, that'll do it. Catch you guys later, and peace out.